I just received an order of five bundles of the Jungle Valcinaria today. And they are, oh, I don't know, it's about, they're about 14 inches long. And, you know, I'm not sure what family this is, but it's a monocot. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a grass or a grass ally, a lily or a lily ally. Um, something that has long parallel veins in the leaves. So I'm going to do something that's just going to shock the hell out of y'all because, you know, always in good fun. But one of the best things I learned, I used to teach horticulture classes at a community college for about 20 years. And one of the things I learned when dealing with uh, monocots, uh, especially as short as the roots are on these, and I'm going to end up unbundling them and planting them all individually across the back of this tank. All right, I've got some other, I think it's Alternanthera in the back. I'm going to get rid of those and move them all over to one side. And I'm really using this plant, this tank for a, a great way to, uh, well, not only for these crazy little uh, albino crebences, because I love them, but also for um, uh, plants to, to get a, a good plant population going for more tanks as they arrive. So anyway, so what I'm going to do, trusty pair of scissors, and I'm going to cut the bag open, but I'm going to take the leaves with them. I'm going to cut these off so they're about three inches. And I know somebody out there is going, is like screaming and cringing and going, oh my God, uh, the top of these leaves will just go on the compost. And the plants here, now that they've been cut back, let me unbundle one one-handed if I can. Hang on, I'm going to set the phone down so you get to look at something. Okay, you get to look at part of the tank and it looks like some fish food and the scissors. And so I've just unwrapped these. And there are three starts um, in, uh, in, in this bundle. And it was wrapped with this little styrofoam in a lead strip, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna plant those like that. And the whole idea is with no roots on these, this will reduce the transplant shock. And from what I understand, these are probably going to melt back anyway, and I'm not going to freak out, and I'm not going to throw them away, because the wh while that's happening, the roots will uh, uh, be uh, be spreading out, and eventually, uh, because it's a monocot, new growth comes from the crown, which is down here where my thumb is. The crown on a monocot is right at the base of the, the foliage and the top of the roots, and that's where the vegetative growth will come from. So these cut leaves will keep pushing out a little bit but new foliage will come right out of the center and it'll do that for I've got five bundles so there's probably 15 or so plants here so I'm gonna do that and we'll uh, recap or come back to this and visit this in a few weeks uh, but in the meantime this is how I'm gonna do this so jungle val um, and ultimately they'll get about two feet long or so and it'll fill the back of the tank uh, and that'll give some, some more cover and just kind of a pleasant appearance because I like, I like plants in tanks and I like planted tanks. Uh, great way to, to deal with the ammonia and the nitrogen or, or the nitrates and the nitrogen in a tank too. And so here we are, 15 jungle valve planted along the back of the tank, one in the corner there. Um, that uh, I can't even count. So 11... 12 all the way around the back here on, on the, the one side all the way up to that sponge filter. And then three more in this corner. So, and there you can see they've been, they've been cut back. And I guess I could put one more in there. I'm gonna move one. I had two that I clumped up. So anyway, there's 15 of them along the back and I wouldn't be surprised that in a month they're darn near reaching the top of the water. And while we're at it, I went to uh, my favorite fish store in Indio, California, uh, Coachella Valley Aquatics, and got six of these orange uh, sortails and 10 of these, and I'll be darned if I remember what they're called, um, it's like red tetras of some sort. I should know that, shouldn't I? Anyway, I'll, I'll figure it out and I will put them in the in the post down below. So I'm going to get ready to cut these loose. 
and I'll come back after they're all swimming around. And they're going to be the, I guess, dither fish in with the cribs and uh, the, the quarries, the autosynclus, and the plecos that are in this tank. So I needed some midwater fish for this because everything's uh, on the bottom so far. And I love them all because they're, they're just great fun. Here we are. This is my 40 breeder out in the garage. This was one of the first two tanks I bought. It was either this 40 breeder or this one, and I can't remember which. Uh, I think I paid 30 bucks for one and 35 for the other, both on offer up, so killer deals. Uh, this may have been the second one. It's like kind of chipped up here and kind of roughed up. It was sitting outside on gravel in the desert. There are some chips over here too, but they didn't look too bad and it's been holding up for, gosh, I don't know, well over a year over a year and a half it was a good deal um and the reason we're here i thought i would do a bit of an update now i'm guessing most of you saw uh my video where i thinned out this val uh, i'm sorry this uh uh amazon sword echinodorus this one on this side this one on this side they had the big runners and lots of little pups on them and i showed you how i divide them and i potted them all and they are all now in this tank. But what I thought I'd do is an update on this jungle valve scenario back here. Um, I don't think I've ever done that. And it is gangbusters, and I know it'll do that. Um, you can see it all at the top of the tank here. We'll change these in a minute here. Um, I bought this, I think I ordered it on March 29th last year, 2023 and got it a few days later did a uh did the uh, uh un unpackaging that's the first part of this video and planted it i think originally in this tank it kind of failed it wasn't doing well so i got it out of there and put it all in this tank all across the back and now uh you can see it's working its way forward there is six or eight inches there from the back glass to right behind this chunk of wood where that jungle val is living. Uh, there is one, let's get my finger in there, right there, the runner, uh, I'm, think, I'm not sure if these are rhizomes or stolons, I'll have to look, um, came under the log and you can see it right back there to the right of that Amazon sword. Stick my arm in there and I will point to it. Let me get this rock out of the way. And the Plecosaurus, you go, you go. And, and there's that runner right there and it connects to this one, connects to these. And my little uh, sword tails are trying to feed on my arm. Goes to these, there's another runner right here Right, so this is how they spread. They just jump along runners. Um, and you could see it also here running down the side of the tank. It's on the right side of the tank and it's moving its way forward. This is what it looks like from the top. These leaves, let's see if I can find a, something that's gonna be as dramatic as I hope. Look at this, oh, that one broke. I prune them uh, peri periodically. Yeah, here, let me do that. I'm throw that away. And here we are. So from where it's rooted, right behind that uh, sword plant, you can see it wiggling back there. All the way up here. More, 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 more. And that's still over two foot, probably almost three feet out of the tank. So what I'll do to prune these, uh, when the leaves are damaged, it's pretty easy. They'll just detach at a damaged point. Um, but I will, if I need to, what I've found works best is to uh, follow a leaf down to the, to the base. And here's one that's kind of yellow. Yeah. Um, there. Just follow the leaf all the way down to the base. We'll pull one out. And, uh, instead of cutting it off halfway, 
just give a little tug right at the base of the plant. That's where it was connected. And that's the rest of the leaf here. So you can thin them out that way a little bit. I have water running all the way down my armpit. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I just thought I'd show you what these are capable of, if you don't already know. Uh, it's a very cool plant. In a big tank, they'd be really nice. I guess in a tank that would be um, maybe three or four feet tall, like what would that be, an eight foot or something like that? It would uh, be more vertical uh, instead of bunching up on the top like this. Um, as it stands, bunching up on the top like this, it offers lots of little cover or lots of cover for these little bitty swords, little sword tails, uh, the fry. They like hanging out in there. As do the red cherry shrimp. You can see uh, there's one right there. Um, yeah, pardon the glare. Um, now, I said I bought these in uh, March 2023, right at the end of the month. I think it was the 29th. And I paid, I believe it was $6.35. And I believe they were in bundles of five. Uh, now I just looked and it looks like they are individual plants and I'm not sure because they weren't real clear. It's an Amazon vendor and it's the same vendor as, you know, over a year and a half ago. Uh, now they are, I think it's $13.88. So they've gone up considerably. Um, but, you know, these are one of those plants that turn out to be the gift that keeps on giving because they multiply and... Uh, they do quite well. And I think at some point I'm going to have to thin these out and find something to do with them. Maybe I'll try this tank again. Uh, maybe I will try eBay uh, and sell a few on eBay. And that what that does is it helps buy fish for them. Uh, anyway, so I thought I'd share, you know, the uh, jungle valve scenario with you all and show you how well it's done. But again, it took... Gosh, I don't know. I feel like it took about six months to get established. And then once established, off it goes. So the, the this tank was set up with, a, uh, I think I've got a pond soil at the base. And then uh, some gravel and sand and more gravel. Uh, and this wood setting on top of it. Um, so it's got plenty to root into. And, and it it seems pretty happy and healthy. Uh, it gets tattered uh, because there are those big plecosauruses in here. And there are also autosynclus in here. There's one of those little guys right there. And they like to uh, feed on the, the algae and the bio slime that lands on the leaves. And that also uh, chews holes in the leaves like you can see on this uh, Echinodorus. You know, the one back there, I pruned off a lot of the more damaged leaves from that the other day. Um, so there, there's one feeding on top of the leaf right there. And that ultimately can cause the leaves to shred a little bit. But hope you get something out of this. And as always, thanks for looking.